Hi there and welcome to another video. Now in this video we're going to be looking at static IP addresses, dynamic IP addresses and how we can track the dynamic IP address that's issued by our ISP and use that with our home servers. And to do that we're going to be setting up both DuckDNS and Cloudflare Dynamic DNS and seeing what makes each one different. Sounds interesting? Then let's get started. Hi there guys, so this is another video in the beginner core topic series where we're going to see how we can track our ISP's dynamic IP address so we can use it to access our home server. So just what is a dynamic IP address then? Well we get two types of IP addresses. We get a static IP address which like the word says it's static which means it never changes it's always the same and we get what's called a dynamic IP address and the word dynamic meaning it can change it's dynamic and can be different things and we'll find both static and dynamic IP addresses in our local network inside our house in our LAN our local area network and also out on the internet in the wide area network or WAN so let's talk about static and dynamic IP addresses in our own network in our LAN. So on our local network, the thing that gives out IP addresses is called a DHCP server. And for most of us, our router does this having a DHCP server built into it. So let's take a laptop on our local network. This is given its IP address from the router through the DHCP server, and in this case over Wi-Fi. This IP address is dynamic and it's been given to the laptop from a pool of different IP addresses that are still available on the router. And the IP address which has been given by the DHCP server is given only for a certain amount of time with what's called a lease. And generally this is about 24 hours but it can be much much longer or it can be much shorter just a matter of hours. So the IP address that the laptop's got, the 192.168.0.101 if when the lease expires the laptop switched off or not on the network, it can't ask for that same lease again. So then that specific IP address will go back in the pool and then it can be given out to another device on the network, such as a phone or something. So when the laptop switched back on, because its original IP address isn't available anymore, when it asks for a new IP, it will be given a different one. So that's why dynamic IP addresses change, because they're shared between multiple different things. But a static IP is different. A static IP address never changes at all. And anyone who's watching this video who's got an unraid server, no doubt you'll have set a static IP address for that, because we need that to always be the same. For example, if we want to go to unraid's web UI, we always want it to be the same address. But in fact, for even people who don't have an unraid server and have never set a static IP address on their network, everyone does have a static IP address. Your router, that will be a static IP. But your modem router, when it's connected to the internet, will have more than one IP address. So let's turn this router around and have a look at the back. So the static IP address of the router is on the local network side on the LAN side here. But it also has an IP address on the internet side or the WAN side as well. And that IP address is given to the router by the ISP. And again, this can be a static IP address or a dynamic IP address. But unlike setting IP addresses on our own network, we can't actually set the IP address on the WAN side to be a static IP address ourselves. We have to ask our ISP to do that for us. And normally, when we have a static IP, we pay a little bit more for our internet. Normally around an extra $10 a month. So for most of us on our home connections, we have a dynamic IP that's assigned to us by the ISP, just in the same way really that our router signs IP addresses to things on our local network. Again, the dynamic IP from the ISP will have a lease which will expire. And when that lease expires, then probably we're going to get a different WAN IP address than we had before. For the average internet user, this just isn't a problem. Most people never want to actually connect back to their own network. But for most people who are running a home server, this is definitely something that we want to be able to do. So for those of us then who have a dynamic ISP WAN address, we need to be able to track it when it changes, so we can connect back. And we track it with a dynamic DNS service, such as DuckDNS, or Cloudflare's dynamic DNS service. And what this does is it links our WAN IP to the host name. And so whenever our WAN IP changes, just like you can see in the diagram here, 
that host name always points to the current IP. OK, so now we've established why we need a dynamic DNS service, let's go ahead and set one up. And in this video, we're going to be looking at setting up two different ones. We're going to be looking at setting up DuckDNS and also the Cloudflare DNS service. So why am I showing how to set up two different ones and just what is the difference between the two? Well, the good thing about both of them is they're both a free service. With DuckDNS, you don't need to have your own domain. When you set up DuckDNS, they'll give you a free subdomain, something like maybe myserver.duckdns.org. With the Cloudflare service, you do need to own your own domain name. And that domain name must be running through the Cloudflare service. So if you don't have your own domain name, or that domain name isn't running through the Cloudflare service, then you're going to need to use DuckDNS. However, if you've got your own domain name and it's going through the Cloudflare service, then it makes sense to use Cloudflare's own DynDNS. OK, so let's first set up DuckDNS. So let's open a browser and do a search for DuckDNS. Then click through to the website duckdns.org and once on the DuckDNS website, we don't actually have to sign up for a new account, but what we do, we can sign in with these various methods here. But actually, the Reddit method is not actually available anymore, so probably when you look at this video in the future, that option won't even be there. So I'm going to log in with Google. OK, so now I'm logged in. Now we need to create a subdomain with DuckDNS and we can choose whatever we want unless it's being used by someone else. OK, so I'm going to try Space Server. OK, so that one's taken, so let's try again. How about Space Invader Server then? Ah, oh, come on, someone's got that one as well. OK, let's try Space Unraid. OK, so I managed to get that one. And we can see here it's already updated the IP address that I'm on now. But obviously what we need to do is to have this IP address automatically update. So let's go back across to the Unraid server and set up a container that will do just that. And let's head across to the Apps tab here and search for DuckDNS. And let's click on the button here to download it. OK, so here we have the template. It's really simple. So the first thing we need to do is put in our subdomain that we just created. So I'm going to go back to DuckDNS and because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy and paste it. OK, and so there's my subdomain pasted in. So back over to DuckDNS again. Now this time we're going to copy in this token and then go back over to the Docker template and paste the token in here. So now this bit of software, basically, it will always check our IP address and update it to whatever it is. So let's go down to the bottom. We'll leave container start after install checked and click on to apply. OK, and it won't take long to pull down this container. It's pretty small. And let's click on to done. OK, so now if we go back to the Docker tab here, just to check everything's fine, let's click onto it and go to logs. And that's great. We've got no errors. At the bottom, it says starting services and done. We're all good. OK, so now let's actually check our subdomain is actually working and we're getting the correct IP. So to do that, let's open a search engine and do a search for what is my IP and then go to whatismyip.com. OK, and so here's my IP address here. So now on my computer, I'm going to open up a terminal window and I'm going to check what the IP address of my subdomain is. And so to do that, I'm going to type ping and then my subdomain. Now this works with Windows, Mac or Linux, the ping command and then just press enter and then you should see a reply with the IP address which is related to the subdomain. And you can see here this is correct, 70.39.126.38. OK, so that's DuckDNS all set up and configured. Now whenever we use that subdomain, it will always point back to the WAN IP back on our home network. So we can use that to connect to the server. But we're not going to cover that in this video. This video is just about setting it up and now moving on how to set up Cloudflare Dyn DNS as well. Now to set this up, we must already have a domain name and that domain name must be linked to a Cloudflare account. Now if you don't know how to do that, then please see my earlier video, another beginner core topic video on how to buy a domain name and link it to Cloudflare. So once you've got a domain and it's all set up with Cloudflare, just head across to the Cloudflare website and log in. So let's sign into Cloudflare. OK, so now logged in, we need to click at the top here and then go to My Profile. Then here we want to go to API Tokens. OK, so to be more secure, we need to create our own token. So we're going to click onto this button here. And if we scroll right down, we want to come here where it says Create Custom Token. Click on to Get Started. And we need to give the token a name. So I'm going to call it Cloudflare Dyn DNS. So next we want to come down to where it says Permissions here. 
and we want to change where it says account from the drop down to zone and then uh, under this drop down here we want to scroll down to zone settings and in this third section here we want to select read okay so then click add more and again we want to select zone and this time instead of the zone settings we're going to choose zone and again we want to select read here and finally we're going to add one more again zone but this time DNS and we want the DNS permissions to be edit and then going down here to zone resources we want to leave that on to include and I'm going to change this from all zones down to all zones from an account and lastly select my account here okay so I'm going to scroll down and click on to continue and now just click on to create token okay so here's our token here so we want to click on to copy and that will copy it onto the clipboard okay so now we want to go back across to the Unraid server and go across to the apps tab and type in Cloudflare DDNS and I'm going to choose this container here um, self hosters Unraid Discord repository and click on the little button to download okay so now let's fill in this template now the first thing to do here now because we've created our own zone API we don't need to have the email variable here so we're going to remove this and then where it says API key here, we're gonna paste in what we just copied to the clipboard. And then for the domain, you want to put in your domain. And for me, that's your domain one. Now here it says optional, but I really highly recommend using a subdomain. And I'll show you why in a minute. And I'm going to name my subdomain dynamic and everything else in the template, we can just leave as it is. Cloudflare proxy true and IPv6, IPv4 records just set to A. So let's scroll down to the bottom and click on to apply. And it won't take a moment to pull down the container because it's very small. Okay, so then click on to done. Okay, so now let's go back to the Docker tab here and we can see that the container started. So we want to check everything's fine. So let's click on to it and go to logs. Okay, so there's no errors in the log, so everything's working fine. So now let's go back to the Cloudflare web UI and have a look at everything there. And here's my domain here, your domain one. And if I click on DNS here and scroll down and there's the subdomain dynamic which has been created by the container and we can see here it's updated the IP address correctly. Now going back to the reason why I always prefer to use a subdomain rather than just having it update the main domain is basically because if you're using this domain for something else and you're running a website or something you might not want to have it update the kind of main actual root of the domain. And if you wanted to have any other subdomains with this same IP, all you'd have to do is to create a C name pointing back to this subdomain. And so that way you can create multiple subdomains coming off the one you created in the container. Okay, so before we wrap this up, let's have a look at one other thing. If we move this up to the top here, so we can still see this part and open up a terminal window. If I ping this domain here, then you can see here that this IP address is not the same as here. Now that's perfectly normal because at the moment this subdomain is proxied. So the IP address we're getting back here is Cloudflare's IP address and my own IP address here is being hidden. Now if I clicked onto edit here and I turned the proxying off and clicked onto save and went back to the terminal window and reaping that address again but before I do that, I should really clear the DNS on the actual computer. So I'm going to run this command here. And so now when I ping the same address, I can now see my own WAN address and not the proxy Cloudflare address. When you're accessing services back on your network, some services work fine when they're proxied, but occasionally you'll get one which doesn't really like it. But that's all things we can worry about in another video, because this video is just basically setting it up and nothing more. And it'll be in the future videos where we'll be looking at how to set up this using a reverse proxy and accessing various containers on our server. So anyway, that's a good time to wrap everything up and bring this video to a close. And so if you like this video, then please hit that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe to the channel. As always, a huge thanks to all of my patrons and supporters out there. Thank you so much, guys, for enabling me to make these videos. I really, really do appreciate your support. Anyway guys, it's getting late here now and it's time for me to go. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.